Welcome back to Come College Online Ministry and Encouragement. I'm Reverend Jewel Williams here with our Wednesday Word for February 3rd. Our theme is More Than a Conqueror, Possessing the Land. You can follow us on our website, williamsinnovativenetwork.org. You can follow us on Twitter, Win With Christ, or you can join us on our Facebook page, Williams Innovative Network. And we're also doing Periscope under Abundant Life COG on Sundays. Um, if you want to follow us and you can always go to our YouTube page, Jewel W1. Our scriptural theme for the year is found in Romans 831. What then shall we say in resp response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And Genesis 15 and 7, he also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to take possession of it. And so for the month of February, we're talking, uh, we're continuing our theme about conquer and possess. And this month, our theme is by activating your faith. And today's subtopic is hope for it. And I'm going to be reading through Hebrews during this month and for uh, Hebrews 11. And so I'm reading what verses 1 through 12. Let's have a word of prayer and then I'll jump right into the scripture. Lord, we thank you for your word because it's already blessed. So we ask as your people that you would open up our ears and our hearts to understand what it is that you're speaking to us. Help us this month to dig in and to activate the faith that is in us. Father, we ask that you activate great faith in us, that we can stand no matter what we face and what we see. So just speak to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Starting at verse 1. Now faith is confident in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commanded for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commanded as commended as righteous what God spoke well of his offers and by faith Abel still speaks even though he is dead by faith Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death he could not be found because God had taken him away for before he was taken he was commended as one who pleased God and without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By faith, he com command condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive in his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tent, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, when was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise and so from this one man and he as good as dead came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands of the seas amen i know it's a big piece of scripture but it is a, it's really meaty and so i'm going to try to jump in and cover as much as i can just want to give you a little bit of background um there's just kind of a debate about who wrote this epistle hebrew some say it was luke others say it was barnabas others say it, one of the other apostles however the apostle paul has been generally named as the author of this epistle the apostle closed the previous chapter with the recommendation that the grace of faith and a life of faith um are are the best uh, preservatives against apostasy or the falling away from the truth. And so it's in this chapter that he moves to sharing the lives of those that had lived by faith. So he tells us faith is important to keep us strong and to not fall away from the truth. And so he gives us this listing, if you will, the hall of fame of faith, those that were faithful. So I just want to go right into giving you the points for today's lesson. The first point I want to bring out, faith and hope go together. We see that in verse one and two. And it's faith is having a complete trust or confidence in someone or something. And in this case, it's that strong belief, it's that strong trust and confidence in God. And Paul tells us that confidence or faith hopes in something, meaning it is placed in something. So it's an active faith. It's not just saying, oh, I believe, but then not something that follows up behind it. And so to say you have faith without it being attached to something isn't really faith at all. So we have faith in God. We attach the confidence in God, in his word, 
in his word to be true and that it will deliver what it says, even if we have never seen it before. And that faith, once it takes root in something, there is then an assurance that we, that what we believe in or believing for is in fact going to happen. So I just want to make a little note right here. This isn't a name it, claim it kind of faith. I'm not saying it just because you say something and you believe it's going to come your way. I'm not talking about this. This is when we align ourselves with the word of God, the Holy Spirit of God, and we allow that to determine what we have faith in. So in fact, our faith is more about God and less about the outcome we want. Let me say that again. So our faith is more about trusting God, his word, what he says, who he is. And it's less about what the outcomes in in terms of what I want, because it's really a matter of us lighting ourselves up to what God wants. But there must be faith and hope working together to press us toward walking in what we say we have faith in. Amen. Second point is hope is only fulfilled by faith. It says by faith, the, the, the scripture said by faith, just in this part of the scripture, because as you read more, it's, it's mentioned more. Uh, even more times, but just in this 12 verses, the words by faith is mentioned nine times. And this lets us know how important faith is in our lives. If we want to desire to take possessions, uh, positions, territories, lands, whatever it is that God has said he has for us in order to take up that position and that stand, it's going to happen by faith. And verse six reads, and without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Um, these individuals mis mentioned um, had faith in God, which led them to, to uh, continue to hope in the things and promises of God. They held on to the promise and were able to see the fulfillment of these promises. How many of us are holding on to our faith? How many of us are continuing to hope in the things yet seen, yet believing God will fulfill all that he promised? Let me just kind of go back and read some of those, you know, the, the hall of famers here. It said, by faith, what happened? By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's um, command. By faith, Abel brought a better sacrifice. By faith, Abel still speaks even though he is 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 dead. Why? Because of his obedience by faith Enoch was taken why because he had lived such a life that God didn't even let him experience death death it says Noah by faith was warned about things and he went and built the ark something he had never seen about had never heard of rain before uh Abraham even though he was old and and past childbearing he still held on to the faith that God was going to prompt do what he promised he would do and so it's just important for us to realize that we have to hold on to what it is we are trusting God for amen the third point is when you hold on to faith the possessions come and verse 11 says and by faith even Sarah who was past childbearing age was unable to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made uh, the promise. And so from this one man, and he, he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands in the sea. Sarah shouldn't have been able to bring a child forth, yet by faith, a trust in God's promise and a hope in those things yet revealed, she was able to bear this child. And as from one man, Abraham came forth the promise of this, and the scriptures say the descendants were as numerous as the stars and as countless as the sayings and the spiritual application for us today is this we have to hold on to the hope and hold on to hope that god uh, is going to fulfill what he has promised for us if his promise you know if he promises he's going to birth something in you and i we don't we we don't and he doesn't look at our lack so we can't look at our lack don't look at the fact that this has been a long time or that you're past in a sense you, you're past where you think you could bring something forth like sarah she was past the birthing age but in a spiritual sense some of us may think we're past the time of bringing forth some something from our lives but god will show up at just the appointed time and bring forth the seed he'll birth something in your life and in my life and when he does from a once barren place in our lives, God can bring blessings too numerous to count. He can bring descendants, spiritual sons and daughters from your life and from my life. And so we want to have this faith 
and know that when we have this faith, continue to hope in those things, even though you don't yet see them, even though it may seem like it's past the 10, because if God promised it, he is not one to lie. And so we can have confidence that he is going to fulfill what he said. What's our life lesson? If we want to conquer and possess the land God has for us, we have to activate our faith and begin to hope for it. Let me say that again. If we want to conquer and possess the land God has for us, the land or the position or the job, the relationship, the ministry, whatever it is he has um, that he wants us to fulfill in this life, we have to activate our faith by beginning to hope for it and beginning to line our prayer, our life and everything up with what God has said. I believe this is just going to be a good lesson this month. I pray that you this will begin to bless you and to activate your faith. Don't just say you have faith, but then you're doubting and you're afraid. Have hope that what God has promised you, he will bring. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this word today. We ask that you would continue to bless us and we ask that you would activate the faith in us, Lord, for the things that we you have promised that we are waiting on to see. And some of us, it may seem like it's gone too long and it's we've waited far too long and that our hope has been so deferred that our hearts have become um, burdened and depressed and upset. But Father, renew our faith in you today and our hope that you are still yet working. It's in Jesus' name we pray this prayer. Amen. God.